Hello everyone, this is Amrit Pal Singh. Welcome to the next video of R language. Guys, in this video, I'll be talking about missing values in R. So first of all, what is missing value? A missing value is the one whose value is unknown. Missing values are represented in R by the NA symbol. So today we'll be looking into some of the functions that are available in R through which you can handle the missing values or NA values, right? So let's get started. I have prepared a notepad file uh, which contain a lot of examples so that you'll be able to understand how the things are working. Let's start with the very first function called is.na. Is.na is a function which, you, which is used to check whether we have the na presence or not. Let's start with a very basic example. I've already have opened up my R studio, so I'll be uh, running all the examples here, right? Here, first of all, we have a first example in which we have uh, assigned na to the x and we are checking the presence of na with is.na. It will be returning the Boolean value because na is available, so we have got answer true. In the same way, we can now try this on the vector and now, now instead of having single value, we have a vector of 3 in which we have na, 11 and 13 are available and it is returning false, true, false because we are having only one na available, other two are the false entries, right? Moving further, let's suppose if we want to calculate the mean, right? But that data is containing the na, so what will happen in this case? If we try to calculate the mean of x, which is a vector, it will be returning NA because we have the presence of NA here. So how we can able to overcome this problem so that we can get a mean? So we can use additional parameter which is called as a NA.RM. It will be removing that uh, RM, th this uh, NA from the data so that we can able to calculate the mean. So it will be re uh, removing that NA from the vector. I got the 12 as an answer because 11 plus 13 divided by 2, I got 24 by 2 means 12. So in this way, we can able to get rid of NA over there. In the same way, we can also test some of more examples that we have a vector available and we can test whether we have a NA available or not. Moving further, in, a, in this example, what we are doing, we are just uh, returning those values which are not NA. Because of the fact we are using the square brackets, it means we're going to access, uh, access the values of the D. Let's see what will happen if I run this example. In this case, I'm using the uh, uh, the square bracket means we're going to access the values of D where there's no NA available because we have an exclamation mark available which is called negation. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4 as a answer. In the same way, we can also make use of this example. What's the difference between this and previous example? Now we also have some of the NAN available as well. NAN meaning is not a number. This is not a number, 0 divided by 0. So that's why we got NAN as an answer. So again, we are just trying to find out the values which are not NA. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4 as an answer. So this is the like a uh, simple example to start with. Just to uh, give you a uh, again quick recap, what is NA? Is a it's a placeholder for something that exists but it's missing. But what is null? Null stands for something that never existed at all. Little basics for you. Moving further to test other functions, I'll be creating one data frame out of a matrix, right? It is uh, four by three, and I'll be creating a data frame out of it. So uh, as we are using AS as a prefix. Please remember the difference between AS as a prefix or IS as a prefix. IS means just to check whether we have a NA available. AS meaning is now it is used for converting, right? So here we are converting the matrix into a data frame which contain two NA values, right? In this case, we'll be having three columns and four rows. Let's create a data frame out of this matrix so that we can carry out some of the operations on it, right? Let me uh, clear the screen and let's create a data. So now, now let's check out what's our data we are having. We are having now three, four rows and three columns in which we have a two NAs are available. So let's now discover the NA in the R. We can discover using these functions. First, we have is.na. So is.na we already have uh, tested. It will be giving you uh, the results. Wherever we have the uh, NA available, we got true. Otherwise, we get false. So we have only have a two, true, two trues available. It means we have a two NAs are available. Rest all the false means all are the non-NA values. Moving further, we have a complete dot cases function. It will be checking the presence of NA row wise. So complete dot cases, we are passing data to it. It will be returning true, true means first two rows don't have any uh, NA. Third is having false means we have a NA in the third row and false uh, means we have a NA in the fourth row or as well. So we have a two trues and two false meaning is like we have a NA's row wise. It will be checking the uh, existence of NA row wise. Now how we can count the NA's in R? We can count the NA's in R using three functions, using regular sum function, using the call sums function and using the uh, row sums function. So let's see. First of all, let's see the two overall count of NA in the data. Although we are aware we have only two NA's are available, but we can get it 
verified with the sum function that we have a two NAs are available. And we can also check the existence of NA column and row wise as well using the call sums and row sums function. Let's do it. I'm using a call sums function. In this case, I'll be getting the result column wise. So first column has zero NA, second column has one NA, third column has one NA. So here V1, V2, V3 is indicating the column names which are automatically generated by the R. In the same way, we can also run the uh, row sums function. It is same as call sums, but it will be giving the result row wise. So I'll be getting the first row, there is no NA, second row, no NA, third row, one NA, and fourth row is one NA. So in this way, we can calculate the count of NAs in the R. And how we can uh, remove the NAs in R? We can uh, remove the NAs in the R using these three examples. First, I can make use of same complete.cases method, or we can use NA.omit data or maybe na.exclude data. Let's run it one by one. First, I'll be uh, running this. It will be removing all the NAs, right? Because I've already told you complete dot cases will work row wise. So because we have a, a NAs in the third and fourth row, so those third and fourth row got removed here. Only first two rows got printed. In the same way, we have na.omit data available. It will be omitting the data, omitting NAs, and it will be giving the result. It will be same result as of previous one. And in the same way, we can also make use of NA dot exclude data. It's another function that we can use to get rid of the NAs. So we got uh, the NAs got removed here, right? Moving further, we can also uh, take advantage of tidyr package. The tidyr package do contain one function which is called drop underscore NA, which can give you the same result, right? So in this case, uh, we are using a data as an input data. Then we have a pipe operator of DPLYR. Then we have the drop underscore NA and it will give you the uh, result without NA. So I'll be getting almost the same answer as of previous one. It means it's just a variation. You can try that the uh, tidyr package do contain the function for dropping NAs. And in the same way, what we can do is we can also pass the uh, column names as well, right? So in this case, I'm passing a column name as V2. So it will be uh, giving the result accordingly. So let's see how we, it's working. So in this case, uh, whatever the NA we are having in the V2, the V2 means second column that got removed because originally data was having this NA in the V2 column. So this complete row got removed from here and we can get a result accordingly. And we, in the same way, we can also pass more than one column name as well. Next one is we can also return some error message when NA exists. Let's suppose if you have a data and you have some NAs available, you can display some message to your client, to your user that, uh, that this data is having the missing value. So you can either change it or you can either like uh, modify the data so that the, the file or the data will not contain any NA. So this is just for displaying some error message, some error message you can show to the public. And another way we can also do it, one, one more function available in which we can leave the data with no action. It means here we are just uh, allowing the NA to pass through. So in this case, nothing will happen. It will just uh, allow that data to pass through even though it contain NA values, right? So these are some of the functions moving further. Uh, we do have one more package available uh, through which we can print that information of NA graphically, right? It's called visdat package. I've already have loaded the library of it, so I don't have to install or load the library. What I can do is I can create one data frame which contain a lot of NAs and we can test a function so that we can see the result graphically. So we have this data available, which is a data frame and this is uh, having a lot of NAs in every column, every row, right? So we can plot the missing value diagram with the miss underscore viz underscore miss function. And let's see, you can see it off your own. I'll be getting the uh, plot drawn on the right side in which this black color indicates the missing values and the lighter color indicates present values. And it means in total, we are having 46.7% of the data which is missing and 53.3 .3 data which is present. So this is another good way to just to observe, like uh, instead of showing the numbers, you can show the graph through which you can represent the NA values. And last point of this today's video is how we can replace that, uh, like uh, this uh, missing data it means, let's suppose we have a NAs are available. I want to replace this with some supplied value. Uh, let's suppose I want to replace that with the zero value. I'll be testing this on my air quality. Air quality is the inbuilt data set, inbuilt data in the uh, R studio. You can see it here. It's a data set in R. I've already have exported this data as a CSV file in my laptop. So I'll be loading it again so that I can perform a little operation in which I'll be replacing NA with a zero value, right? So first of all, I'll be reading that data right in my, from my laptop. It's available in my desktop and I'll be replacing all NAs 
okay with the zero let's see it here so in this case you can see uh, it's df2 right uh, first of all we have read that value okay okay uh, this is a little mistake in this code because uh, in this case i have to use it two here not df because df2 is a variable name so i have to use the same again let me rerun, rerun again so you can see there will be no nas are available now right all the nas are been replaced with zero here so what we have done in this code that we have first read our, uh, this uh, file from using a read.csv function and we have just replaced that those nas values with the zero okay and you can see now there's no n available in this but originally the air quality has a lot of nas available so you have replaced that with the zero value zero answer right moving further we can also do one thing we can also uh, uh, just replace that na with the mean of the of that column let's suppose if we are talking about that a zone column this a zone column has lot of nas right what we can do is we can replace that nas with the mean of that column so let's run this piece of code you can see that that na value in that ozone column will be will be replaced with the uh, with the mean of it so i'm just uh, uh, showing the ozone now it will be now replaced with the all nas with are replaced with the uh, mean of it okay you can see there's no na available so that ozone value uh, nas are been replaced with the mean of that ozone value right so this is called as a another another function that we can try moving further we do have another function available which is called replace it's a, a function available which can like what what can what it is performing here we have let's suppose this data set available this data set has having lot of uh, negative values available let's suppose i want to replace this negative value with the zero let's suppose so what we are doing is like we are replacing we have a three arguments available first is the uh, that column name and then we are supplying a condition that those uh, values which are less than zero just replace it with the zero so it will replace all negative values with the zero another uh, simple example for you in this case you can see this entry entry 1 entry 2 in this case we are supplying here entry true so entry true uh, is having uh, a lot of negatives are available so we can replace that negatives right with the zero this we can do with the help of replace function which will take three arguments first is the data second is the condition third is the supplied value right and last is we can uh, also make use of replace underscore na of the tidr package to replace a particular value with the another value right so in this case you can see we have a data frame available let's create a data frame as a last example it's also a part of tidr package both uh, drop underscore na and replace underscore na so just last example for this we are having this data frame available now what we can do is we can just replace a particular value right with the uh, na value with the supplied value right so in this case you can see this uh, status is having one na available i want to replace this na with a single so this i can do with this little syntax and i'm using this uh, capability or the functionality of the uh, tidr package and you can see now df status the column of that it has been replaced that na with the single value right so we can also replace multiple values with the help of list method okay so in this case what i'm doing is i'm replacing the uh, na of status with single and na of uh, education with the none okay so this i'm doing in one shot instead of running two commands i'm running one command only so you can see now if i replace this uh, if i can show this now so we have uh, na replaced with none in education column and na has been replaced with single in the status column i hope you must have understood the concept of handling missing data in r if something is not clear right please do comment on my video i'll be happy to address your question or query right thanks for watching guys see you next video